All right, welcome, Doc. Thank you. It's great to have you here. Great to see you again. And um, we really appreciate your participation in our leadership series, which has uh, grown like crazy ever since we, uh, we had this initial idea. And I'd love, love to start, if you would, by Roland, just introducing yourself and uh, a little bit about your background. Certainly. Well, I'm Dr. Roland Roberts, and uh, my I'm the CEO and the executive director of The Prompting, which is a philanthropic organization that focuses on influencing influencers and leaders, uh, especially in the areas of business, uh, life, and sports, uh, helping them win and keep the, keep the right mentality, a winning uh, mentality. So that's, that's a lot of the focus. We do crisis management for uh, both the celebrities and also companies and create high growth organizations with our 90-day uh, race. Yeah, no, we've got to know each other a little bit over the last few years and um, pretty amazing stuff. And it's, uh, it, it's a, lot of, um, a lot of what I do in the sense of comparing sports to business, and uh, we'll, we'll get into that. But here's the toughest question, I guess, to start with. In, in only a couple of sentences, two to three, how would you define leadership? Well, it's a, it's a great question and a loaded one for sure. Uh, I would par I would uh, paraphrase to, to 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 the definition by saying that there are different st kinds of leadership and in different scenarios, uh, and so I think leadership looks differently based on how it's applied. That that groundwork being said, leadership to me uh, fundamentally is the uh, is the pursuit of a worthwhile. Uh, the progressive realization and the progressive pursuit of a worthwhile objective. And I boil it down to that because ultimately leadership begins with you. It begins with me. It begins with me leading myself before I can lead anyone else. And so am I leading myself? Am I choosing and making uh, the decisions intentionally about where, what I'm doing, where my life is going, what I'm going to eat, how long I'm going to sleep, what I'm going to do, how I'm, who I'm going to be, how I will communicate and interact with other people, all of that self-control, discipline, that is a leadership function that starts with the individual person. And if someone is progressively pursuing their dream, their passion, their worthwhile objective, then they are effectively leading themselves. Yeah, I think that's a great that's a great way to start, and uh, it's, it's it's basically you're accountable. You're accountable for your leadership. Um, along those lines, it's gonna it's gonna be really cool how we progress here. Um, you've got a very unique background, obviously, entrepreneur, technology, nutrition, education, and safety, um, as well as executive coaching, and you're an author. Right. Probably would have been easier saying what you don't do, actually. Um, but you've been a CEO and you've coached CEOs. You've coached other senior management people. Can leadership really be taught and learned? Well, you know, I definitely believe that uh, that leadership can be uh, taught, uh, or I, I think it can be learned. I think is maybe the better thing, uh, because sometimes I think leadership, especially the it factor, when leadership, there's a difference between the the teaching. Uh, you know, part of part of both my uh, MBA and then the doctoral studies included, you know, classes and education on leadership. There are principles of leadership without a doubt. Uh, those have been very well documented and established. But to make someone an effective leader has that intangible it factor. Uh, and I think it's the difference between companies that win. It's the difference between first place and second place. It's the difference between uh, world leaders who are, who are wildly successful and then others who uh, you, you know, aren't so much. And that it factor is the learned part of your question. Uh, it's, in fact, I've always uh, said it that it's caught more than taught. And I think that has to do with the student. It has to do with uh, it has to do with the person who is wanting to lead. And which kind of leads into into my next point. You know, I was talking recently to an executive of a um, a pro team, pro NHL team to be exact, and. Uh, and they told me that, you know, every year, Mark, you said, we, we go to win the championship. That's, that's the goal. We want to win the championship. Now, we understand there's other great teams, and they have the same goal, too. We're not going to win the championship every year. But what we do want to do every year is have, and they demand it, is have winning seasons. 
So how do you create a winning culture? And he talked about the culture was beyond just the players. It all, all went, went all the way to the ushers in the stands and everything. How, how, do you, how do you create that winning culture where you have exceptionally smart, talented people and at the same time keep it consistent? You're not like the one hit wonder right. of the song no, type that, of deal. You asked the right question and uh, th- you're to be commended because most people don't ask the right questions and, and, and the wrong questions get the wrong answers and you're trying to solve the wrong problem. Uh, and culture is the problem today. It's the problem uh, both politically, it's the problem in business, it's the problem uh, for companies, it's the problem for startups, it's why some products that should do well don't do well. It has some, most of the time it has nothing to do with some of the, uh, the, the things that people think is the reason they're not being successful. Culture uh, is everything rides on uh, on culture that ha- that at least has to be there, and uh, and I think some of the contributing factors to a culture of excellence is to realize that uh, excellence is the standard, not perfection. You're not like you said, you're not going to win the Super Bowl every year, but excellence is the standard. And in order to be excellent, uh, part of that philosophy is that the extras aren't extra. You know what you think is going the second mile is still the first mile. Uh, and and right. so we have a culture and, and a, uh, the, my, my most recent company, Jenga Baby, we had a very special culture. Uh, and I started with the with the staff uh, and it was here is how we're going to talk to each other. Here's how we're going to communicate. Here's how we're going to interact with each other. Here's going to be the level of, uh, of excellence we have behind closed doors. It's the level of excellence we have for cleanliness. Uh, and I always, whenever I acquired, uh, after we got started, I acquired another business and rolled it in and did, did the rollover and the merger. And in that process, the renovation started on the inside. Customers didn't even know we were, it was, it was our company uh, for almost two months because I wanted to start with making an amazing place for my staff to work. Because if they were happy, if they were excited to come to work today, Day, right. then I was going to have the best customer interactions that I could ever hope for. And the other thing that I look for in creating culture is uh, is I want staff that, uh, you know, I want to pay them great wages, but I don't want them to be there for the money. Uh, I want them to be there because it aligns with uh, that our culture and our vision and our philosophy aligns with their core values. And, and if it does, then then we're working for a whole lot more than just the the, the dollar. And that, so culture is everything. The, uh, the uh, perfection isn't the goal, excellence is. And, and I think that uh, you attain that by what happens behind closed doors. A lot of companies and leaders that I see try to have this excellence uh, uh, forward facing front to the public or to their customers. But if you ask people who've worked there what it's like, or it's almost like in a restaurant industry, you know, you don't want to go look at the kitchen kind of a, a thing. Uh, and if you make sure that the, the, the back of the house is as good or better than the front of the house, then even then you can, that's the only time you can be perfectly aligned and be in integrity and integrity and authenticity when it comes to leadership is everything. Right. Yeah. You just, uh, you touched on a point that I was going to mention because the other points that always come up are, are if we trust each other, that's going to be the best foundation that we've got to be able to be a successful winning team, be it in sports or business. And then again, he said, just like you're saying, you know, when you get to the playoffs and championship, how much money they make doesn't make them play better, or worse or whatnot. It's what they got deep down that's doing it. It's not that I made hundred thousand dollars more. If you have so the right what, people, kind of what you're referring uh, to. Pay isn't going to get you a higher quality person. Um, and this is where leaders miss the boat. What the, here's the principle talking about from a culture perspective, you attract who you are, and, and this is for leaders listening here, you attract who you are, not who you want. So what happens is people who are in leadership positions, and if you want to make that distinction, if they're leaders or not, but people who are in leadership positions attract who they are, not who they want. So you have someone who wants to to hire a, a recruit a championship team, be it in sales and technology and healthcare and business and sports. And, but what they don't understand is A players will not work for B managers. Uh, if, if you don't have the integrity, if you don't have the level 
level of excellence. If your standards aren't as high as theirs, then there is nothing to be gained from that relationship. They do not feel like they are being a part of a team, which is something, the reason people join teams is to be a part of something bigger than who they are. Right. And so if if this bigger thing is lower than who they are, right. they won't go there. And if they do, they won't be there for long. Yeah, that's exactly what I tell clients every time we get a search. You know, if you want if you want the B or C player, you know, put on Monster maybe. If you want the A player with the right fit, then let's let's go get them. And you're right, the uh, you know the most yes. successful coach yeah, hires the assistant coach that can take his it. place. And right. That goes back to the culture, though, so, uh, because if that's your philosophy, then you're not going to hoard information. Right. You're going to be very transparent. Uh, information. I send out our daily revenue reports to our staff. Yeah. Now, why would you do that to a nine dollar an hour employee? Because I want, or ten dollars an hour, or you know whatever they make, I, I want them focused on what we're focused on, and uh, and I want people to understand that what you do today does matter. Right. What you do does contribute to the overall picture, and we're, we're all watching. We're all working together for the same thing. It's interesting because uh, every we take on a search, I talk to management about what the vision is to make sure everybody's aligned for a lot of reasons, including when they speak to the candidate that you want, you want them to be aligned. And every so often I get, well, it's to make a lot of money. And I'm saying, that's but not that's the vision. vision. <laughs> your, your decision making and it always uh, messes will not up resemble that of a quality thinking. leader. Uh, it will, it will, you will make uh, ethical, uh, you are subject uh, and exposed to making right. uh, laps, uh, lapses in ethical, uh, your judgment's gonna be skewed and um, it's headed for disaster whenever money is the only goal. To me, it's, uh, that's kind of a prerequisite. It's not a decision that has to be made. Uh, if a business mo the business model itself has to be set up so that yes, it yes, it's going to work. It's just getting the right people to work it uh, and to maximize it. Yeah, no, I agree. It's it's a, it's a great way of explaining it. Um, it kind of ties in, you know, um, with what I was going to ask next about what your thoughts are of the benefits and in the relationship even between talent and wellness. I mean, you've been successfully involved in the nutrition business, but kind of what you're talking about is is having a, uh, a nourishing culture, if you want to put them together as well. But, but talent and wellness is a big topic these days. We've done some other videos on them. Tell me how you feel about with your experience of been being involved in that that industry and making it successful, uh, but also how it helps uh, the performance of people that, uh, in business. I think that the best leaders and the pe the most effective uh, once again have to lead themselves. So from a from a what you eat, you, the amount of exercise and the amount of sleep are obviously the biggest contributing factors to your success in business and startups. That's also where most people uh, uh, fail. Uh, a lot of leaders would have been more successful if they had taken care of themselves first, realized that that is business. And that's where I struggled, uh, Mark, for years because uh, I did not believe, I did not equate those two. I didn't connect those dots. Uh, to me, uh, And uh, I thought that and I, I justified my being overweight uh, because of the title that I had at a Fortune 500 company, because of how busy I was, how important I was. I had 1,500 employees. And so, of course, I'm going to be overweight. I work. I mean, that's what I do. And, you know, and, uh, and I'm on a plane, you know, three to four days a week. It, and so right. you don't get into <laughs> rhythms. You don't get into routines. It's not a nine to five. And so I justified those things uh, until I met someone who was infinitely more successful than I was. Their, their marketing budget was several billion dollars. They had multiple blimps and had a couple of stadiums and, you know, a couple of cars in NASCAR. And we met, we flew, at a, flew into a neutral location and uh, I was getting ready to order everything, you know, on the menu for, 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 this, uh, for this visitor. And, um, and all they wanted was a salad. And, and all these other people that I'd always, always wine and dine for several years always, you know, wanted that. And then here's this guy. He's just like, no. And, and obviously he was there on a private jet and all these things. And I'll, I said, here's a guy who is busier than I am, significantly more successful than I was, you know, at that time in my life. And I'm saying he's putting his health as a priority, he said, no, I ran I ran seven miles before I jumped on the plane this morning, so I, 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 I'm just going to stick with a salad. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, you got an earlier start than I did, and so I just started connecting these dots. And I think entrepreneurs, leaders, business owners uh, have to understand the emphasis on, on getting the proper amount of sleep, 
and uh, on eating to nourish, not to be full, but eating to nourish. And if you uh, realizing that, you know, 75, 80% of your weight is not how much you exercise, it's how you eat. And, right. and then using that other exercise in moderation uh, to be, to right. be, uh, achieve an optimal lifestyle. What happens when you do that is you're going to get the mental clarity to make better decisions. You're going to be more focused. You're going to be more on point. Uh, you're going to be more articulate, you're, which means you're going to close more sales. You're going to close more deals. You're going to be a better leader and a better communicator to your staff and to your team and to your stakeholders. And that's what effective leadership, you know, is. Yes. Yeah, and then and they'll follow and they'll generally follow suit because that's uh, I mean it, 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 it's it's funny I had um Alamo Rent a Car this was like 20 years ago I named one of their HR people 20 years ago give or take the director of wellness and I remember people saying that's ludicrous what a dumb name for an HR person and they were way ahead of their time and um, but it, it made a difference well, even to the even to the the bit about well I guess they really do care about us in the company so it's it's very interesting um let's talk about board members a little bit um you know they're obviously valued leaders and it's changing a lot um, we do we do a lot of board advisory and board searches it's diversified it's a lot more diversity age second you name it the whole thing you know how do you view the right fit on Fantastic a board question. in this and, theme uh, of I've leadership reported to several be boards, What's the best uh, as, use as of a ceo and had to be responsible for board formation uh of some of my own boards and what I looked for was I wanted an active board, number one. I didn't want yes people. Uh, I wanted people who could bring, who could challenge the thought uh, and kind of partner with me, uh, just not on a full-time basis. You know, I, let me run, I'll do it. But I really want that, that mind share. I want that collaboration. Uh, I want you to be a part of this with me. I want to bring ideas and you, and you kind of help, help mold those and then let us execute them. Uh, I really wanted a partnership is the way I viewed the board and the CEO uh, when, as in that role. So how I was how I looked for that is the same way that I would if I was building up the technology department or the marketing department or the sales department and the accounting and having to bring these people together uh, so that I didn't have the talk about culture so that I didn't have the traditional conflict between sales and marketing or between sales and finance or you know whatever the the, the, the traditional silos mm -hmm. are. So. There's, here's the guiding principle, Mark, that I've used in, in board formation. The best analogy, and I made this mistake early on, uh, I thought that if I had the very best accountant and I had the very best sale, VP of sales and I had the very best VP of marketing that money could buy, and I put all these, these uh, exceptional people together, that I would then have an exceptional company. And I, I was wrong. Uh, and it's the same philosophy if you're the Dallas Cowboys or the Los Angeles Lakers, when you're, when you're building a team – Obviously, the culture and the personalities and what is need, the dynamics uh, are so critical, the energy management, if you will. And so how I uh, – the mistake that I made was bring, trying to bring in the best of the best in every it's category, thinking that then I would have the best. But the problem with that thinking – and there's a great thought leader who's passed away now, Russell Acoff, from a business perspective. And one of the illustrations and examples that he used was with a car. Uh, if I used – uh, in one of his books, he said, if if I took the very best transmission from the uh, that, that's ever been made, the very best tires, the very best steering wheel, the very best muffler, the very best body style, the safest body style, the very best spark plugs, the very best, you know, this, every every single element on that car was the, from the best one. It might have been Chevy, a part over here, Ford over here, Jaguar over here, Mercedes over here, and I put them all together, you're going to have the best car, period, and it won't go anywhere. Because no, because the parts do not work together. The and and so you but it to might not understand be the best team, board right? formations and selecting a board and working with a board, it's much more right. valuable and much more effective to cr get the highest performing teams that you can. But uh, but along those lines, you have you're you're having to manage other things other than are they the best. Uh, you're having to say, are they the best for this company? Are they the best for this culture? Are they the best for this, uh, for what we're trying to accomplish at this time? And that's what you're building is that team. And that's the same goes for sports teams. Understanding 
that that's what they're trying to create. I don't have to have the best wide receiver in the whole wide world. I need to have an amazing receiver that works Absolutely. the best with my quarterback in the whole wide world. No, I, I, I agree 100%. I, I, and, it, and I think boards are starting to get that more and more these days. Um, yes. A couple of quick Dogs personal questions. Dogs Not real horses. personal, but personal. One to two word answer type of deals. Do you have a pet? Oh, dog and horse is cool. All right, because we're doing a thing love, on uh, I'm a pilot. pets and your executive soon. So we'll have to get you involved in that. Um, do you have a favorite activity uh, or no, sport? No, I like a lot of action movies. 007 is always, uh, always my go-to. Cool. How about movie or TV show? Uh, no, uh, personal development is what I is what I listen to. <laughs> Goldfinger. All right. Music. Ah, uh, uh, obviously, I I love the I love the healthy things. <laughs> um, I, I love um, the healthy things. Food. If I'm going to stray food? from that, then uh, you know, give me a whole lot of bacon uh, and uh, and maybe maybe a couple slices of pizza. <laughs> oh, there you go. I was just up in Maine, as you know, and I had a great lobster roll. Likewise, Mark. Thanks so much. Take those, care. Those are all